So let's take a look at forms. And there are two types of forms. I want to go over the notes here first. One is called the reactive, the other is the template driven. And uh, they are named because of how data are, how and where data are stored okay, and how you create components. When I say components in this case, I should say form components okay, or form controls. So notice when you create a form like, um, like, like this in the flight list, well, it's not a form, but when you create a form, you're gonna add you know, the field for ID, flight number and type and so on. So each of those will be a field. And you have to do that, right, in, in the form, which is normal. So what you can do here is that if you're using a reactive, then you control those forms in the source code. And I'll show you what that means later when we do it. If you are creating using a template driven, the keyword here is template. Okay, that means all your forms, you control everything in the template. Like you control, especially uh, validation stuff, like the minimum, maximum characters or length or size, um, the type of content or the type of input, like is it a password, or email, uh, you can put so that a few is required. You do all of that like you normally do in your HTML form. You add that explicitly, manually in the content in the form, right? That's the template driven type. The reactive, you can also do that too, but you're not going to touch the template at all. The template only house the input tags and all the tags that you need. Everything will be controlled in the source code. You do that inside the, the program. And so that is the difference. And the difference between the major difference between the reactive and template driven is where is the data being stored? Okay. The data is sometimes referred to as the single source of truth. So template driven form, you say the source of truth, okay, is in the template. The template in this case is in the DOM. And this is something that you're already very familiar with. So far, when you create a form and you want to access the data, everything you do so far up to this point, including in the Web2 class, you access data from the DOM, right? We're using the web form. If you remember, we did that with the book uh, stuff. You access the data when you say document element of ID dot username. Okay, you're getting that from the DOM. So the data are in the DOM and not in the source code. So that means if you want to get the data, you have to pass all these data to the source code through that data binding we talked about. Otherwise, Angular does not know how to get the data. Okay, so here is again the form. And these data here are only present in the DOM. Angular needs them in the source. You have to pass them to the source. Okay, just like your regular form, how you pass this form control data to say that uh, if you pass it to the back end of a PHP file or express a, a program, you pass it through the form data. <clears throat> so here is the difference between the other one and, and this one here. So the source, as you can see, has, has no direct access to the form control. It does not know where to get those data. So here is the form. They're different. We have to submit the form. <clears throat> okay. Notice we have to submit it. Once you submit it, you call a function called handle submit. This is function you call, whatever you want, doesn't matter. And you pass this entire form. Remember, we give an ID, right? The pound size is an ID for this form. And we're going to pass this form and all its inputs to this function in a variable called flight form. This variable here is this variable here. This is the template variable. If you remember last week how we create template variables, any of this input tag can have a variable in a template. You should put a pound, pound sign followed by a unique name. You can access these content, right? So you pass the entire form to this function. So this form here have access to all the input tags as long as you give it a name, okay? You have a unique name, then you can access them by using the dot notation, right? Dot flat number, dot, you know, uh, return date, whatever it is, you put here. And notice also all my validations here. I have to put it inside the, in the tag here, minimal length, maximum length is required, right? If it's a password, you have to say password, the type would be password, uh, type of the email, and so on. You put everything here just like you normally do in a regular form. And the only thing difference here you see is the, the um, 
two-way binding here, right? So you bind that to a variable in the source. But if you make changes in this content data, you have to get the data from the form, okay? That's why the source does not have access to your form control. You have to pass it to it, or you have to bind it using the data binding so you can access it directly um, from here.